I'm going into a sutural tunnel that hasn't been explored in 150 years. And if we're lucky, we can make it all the way to the oh, Savage yeah. Mine. Are you with me? Then you better smash that like button. Smash it hard! Hi there, I'm Chris with the Sutro Tunnel. Tell us a little story about this, because there's a lot of folks out there that don't know that much about this place. Well, the Sutro Tunnel was started to drain the mines of Virginia City, be a drainage out of so all the water could come out of the mines that were flooding them, aerate the mines so the miners had ventilation and transport ore in and out of the tunnel. They started it in 1869, he completed it in 1879, and they continued operation of this until 1942, 1943, when it was shut down under Executive Order L-208. And how many miles is it? It's three 3.88 miles to the Savage Mine and then a mile and a half in both directions, north and south, connecting all the mines of Virginia. Wow! City. Because it was acted or drilled as a drainage tunnel, it's mm -hmm. still doing its job. Yeah, right? the water's still running today. And so this water is coming from all the mines of Virginia City. That's correct. Now you had this tested and it's got silver in it? It's got a little bit of silver, high dissolved solids, and there's bacteria from all the rotting timbers that are back there that we need to pull out. And as we clear it further back, there's little dams because it pull up from and all the timbers, and it settles and it keeps draining through. The further back we work, the faster the water will flow. I've heard stories that there's a bulkhead that they put in place about 500 feet back. It, in the biography of Adolf Sutra, it does say there's a bulkhead back there. Right. And he said that they put in that bulkhead because it's good to have a door to your house. It was mostly so he could lock it up and charge those guys <laughs> if they didn't end up paying. Even then they were locking yeah. up their minds. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Jeff, I don't want to hear all this jaw jacket. Get your butt in there and let's take a look. Well, that's what I'm going to do. Just keep them pants on yeah yeah oh it's so exciting like a kid in a candy store well what are you waiting for get off that couch start eating chips and come with me all right so this is not safe so everybody sign the way over here yeah so the water here that you see keep cool what they did this was much later so this was used to all the minerals they put it right it goes into here. We trench this to the side for now. But we're going to do a uh, false floor with rails on the top right. so the water can still run underneath, underneath of it. it. And then we can dome it on top and make this all just able to travel through and go inside. Wow. And you see, so back here it starts getting harder. Yes. It's, it's uh, not as dry. Exactly. Yeah. So if you work, heck yeah. Look at these old timbers. Oh my goodness. This is a history right here. Yeah. So you're probably the first person that's been back this far other than our engineer. I love it. You see where they had the cribbing right here? This was up on top. Mm -hmm. And they would stack the timbers back and forth, back and forth to create a structural support on all this alluvial. And now everything we're standing on is just that collapsed. There's air pockets under us. And if yeah. you look back, that's another pool of water. And it just goes like that, as far back as you can see. Get on in here, boys. You can see where they had the collar posts right here. This would keep the collar posts from not dropping, so they put these in, and that would keep the sets square apart. So you have to have these in place, just like you do in any other mine, except this thing is on a larger scale. Wow, these timbers are... Yeah, I just wouldn't touch the walls either. You know, look at this. Wow. The only thing that's missing is the the, uh, the caps. Mm -hmm. When the caps fell in. Yeah, we're gonna re We're not sure if we're gonna go straight square set to make it historical. Right. How we're gonna do it, but we're gonna try to stay as historically accurate as possible. Well, because we have shotcrete now in the structural yeah, foam. Yeah, exactly. We can do stuff that they couldn't do 150, 120 years ago. Wow. There's still got to be track in here too. We pulled up a piece of track just at the portal entrance right. that was buried and it came right up. So there sure is track under here. And they were transporting stuff in and out. like I said, in 1904, they came back in here and put another quarter of a million dollars to rebuild the tunnel because they were still running ore through here. It's 
starts in answer point A, in Carson's Valley, and running in a westerly direction, four miles, will cut the Comstock load at a perpendicular depth of 2,000 feet. In order to expedite the work, we started four shafts, marked number one, number two, number three, and number four, about one mile apart from each other. Shaft number one reaches the tunnel level over two years ago and proceeded in each direction. The easterly drift of that shaft met the header of the tunnel and so accurate were the surveys that the variation did not exceed a single inch. Number two reached a depth of 1,044 feet in April last, and after drifting 200 feet in each direction, a large body of water was encountered in the westerly drift, which rushed in with such force that the men at work there barely escaped with their lives. So how long do you think it'll take before you guys can get this up online? Uh, October 19th is going to be our recommencement ceremony. Uh -huh. We're going to bring out the timbers and the mill and do a ceremony for that. And then we're hoping early next year have the first 50 feet done. And start. Work. It's all based on funding, too. I mean, right. we, we, I've already spent $40,000 of other people's money just on this part. So. And it looks good. You guys cleared yeah. out a lot. It was a mess in the front. Oh, that was a lot of work. Oh, there's a picture of me. So... It, the water came out so fast, it flooded this whole area. Right. So I brought my snake from home, and it, they plugged the drain pipe. So I'm down there sitting down in the water up to my hips. Right. Draining <laughs> the snake, clearing out that debris. Well, we got it. Wow, yes, you did. Isn't this awesome? This is a p beautiful view. Nobody's ever seen this. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. You better be happy. This is the candle building. So kids... Uh, weren't allowed to work underground back then. I think it was up to a certain age. Right. But instead, they worked in here and they made candles for the mules and the miners. Oh, that is so cool. That's what a dynamite box in front of you. That, that was typical for them, uh, like a giant day box. They would stop yeah. before they got in there, load up the powder they need, the caps, the safety fuse, all that stuff, yeah. and then head in there. So if you look in the walls too, so you can see what we've rebuilt. Yeah. And then you can see the old stuff. And there's markings in the walls, people's wow. names and dates and... Yeah. Oh, the old kerosene cans for uh -huh. roofing. This whole wall was falling down, so we've done this part and then this part. Wow. And we based you it guys off did of a good job. Yeah. My uncle, he was a logger up in Oregon when I was a kid, my great uncle. I never met him because he had a bunch of caps in his pocket. They're loggers, they're blowing stuff. Did he sit down on them? Lightning struck one of them and chain reaction, boom, they never found anything. Museum that shows exactly how much powder they were using. Really? It shows exactly. Per day? Per day, per month. Well, Per month, how much powder? I think yeah, that makes sense. Per month. Yeah. So they would they would mark it on the the timber. So then when they hauled it in there, they'd say, "Oh, uh, this is a girt, or this is a cap, or this is a post." Those are the three that you really have to worry about when you're assembling a square set. Yeah. So you see it, it written, and it's so cool. They have that 1905 handwriting. It's just elegant. Look at that old growth lumber. You see that? Look how tight those bands are. Those rings, growth rings. Appeared into like the sixties. So in some of the photos, so I don't know what that is. I used to always wonder why did they paint all their barns red? And then I had an old timer tell me. Why? He said because the paint was the cheapest. Yeah. It's the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's like the one we got in our cabin. That is so cool. Oh, yeah, there's, there's only the man himself. There's only two of these that I know of. This one and the one at the Fourth Ward School. And these, they were both made by Greg Melton. Right. The full size one that he made is downtown Carson City. Oh, yeah! It's all three made by the same guy, and they were all made here in this room. Wow. In this room? In this room. So they didn't have floors in here. These floors were put in later, 1970. So this was a blacksmith. Wow. Yeah. So they had the forge in here, and they did yeah. the casting. We got part of one of the small forges out there in the yard. Wow. Yep. That's lost wax casting too. We've done that before. That is a lot of work. Oh, we got track running through here. Yep. So this track was put in later. They just put it in. It wasn't part of it since it was a blacksmith. Oh, so the okay. shop was actually over there. We found another one of these. So they're square lanterns. 
that were throughout the tunnel. That is so cool. I'm going to say that looks like a giant lantern box. It is. It's a giant lantern box. Everything in Sutro was bigger. The, the, the whole tunnel was lined with these. Wow. wow. Imagine the job of making sure that was lit. Ah, and make sure there's no fire. Oh yeah. my gosh. Are you kidding me? From Sutro, that's our telegraph machine. We bring it out sometimes on big events, oh, but they wow. keep it. But if you look, it's not like a regular telegraph machine. There's letters and numbers. So you would sit and type and be able to type out what you want to say and it would translate to the telegraph machine and that, instead of having to go beep, 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 Morse code. Yeah. yeah. Cool. I've never seen one like that. You're right, everything here was bigger. See all the buildings that were there? Man. Oh, snow, no way. Look at that, he's got these detailed sketches of what did it look like? Uh -huh. The reasons for it, yeah. Wow. So look at how he had the tunnel originally designed in this shape. Um, yeah, I'm gonna say no on that one. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> I don't like that design. Well, this was his original thought, and then he's drawn it out like this. But we we see the pictures he did end up going this right. way. Right. But see, there's carts and oars, and this is underground. So there is speculation. There's all sorts of underground town under there, really. Yeah. All sorts of machinery and whatnot. As we wow. get back, we'll find more. Look at that. Just incredible labor. Yeah. Accidental explosions, yeah, that happened all the time. Oh yeah, and here's all the shafts and how they're all gonna be connected. Mm -hmm. Wow, that would be so cool if you could get in there just to see a glimpse of it. Yeah. And then use this as the entrance because there's no way in up there. There isn't. We this checked, is the all the entrance. shafts are plugged. Yeah. This shows oh, numbers yeah. of drill sharpened, carloads of, car of ore removed, powder used, aggregate depth. Holes drilled. Oh, they're using everything. giant powder. Well, That's and this wasn't, this was it, before it was finished completely. The, each shaft was like its, or uh, air shaft was its own community, its own project. So this is the one that we saw this right is, up the hill where your this is where the solar panels, panels are. are. Yep. That's 1A, I call it. That's air shaft. See on the right. It's shaft number one. It's further back. That's where I pointed out where the rocks turn in. Right. And this is over the saddle. There's a saddle in there right. and then goes back. Yeah, these don't look like they were ever finished. Mm -mm. And then right here, 800 feet. This, finding this was really good. There's our breccia. Right, breccia. The, your breccia. That, this is where it starts getting hard. Right. Because right there, so you can conglomerate. conglomerate. So that's your alluvial, all your boulders. Yep, alluvial and then conglomerate. And here, it's going to be a lot easier. But then look, red clay. Yeah. And then propylate. The clay is where it's going to get interesting. But, and that's where you can see. So, so look how much time it took to go through this section. Yeah. And then, oh, look, it got easier. Yeah, and because this is solid and, rock. Yeah. Trachyte is in form an andesite, uh -huh. and it's solid. You have to drill and blast. And then you get to the clay, and you're like, or Easy digging. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't say easy digging, but yeah. got another air shaft over here. This is directly in line with the Sutro. Sutro is about maybe 1,200 feet down. I'm gonna try to send a camera down there and see what it sees.
Yep, here's another air shaft for the Sutro Tunnel. It's perfectly in line with the other one. Here's where the hoisting works were. You can see they cut all the bolts off for World War II. And there is the hole. Now this one was never completed, meaning it never reached the Sutro Tunnel. And the reason for that is because by the time the Sutro Tunnel got over to the combination shaft, they started digging this one and they tapped into the combination. They got plenty of fresh air from there. So they figured why waste time and money sinking an air shaft when the combination is right around the corner. And right about over there where that tree is, is where the shaft was for the Savage Mine. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because 1,600 feet down below our feet is where the Sutro Tunnel connects in with this guy. So that's 3.8 miles straight across to the other side where we were just at. Isn't that amazing? Then from here, it does a T. One runs off this way, one runs off that way, and that way it connects the other mines and it can act as a drainage system and a ventilation system. Now what you're looking at here is the trestles that ran from the mine across the train track and over into the ore bins. And this is where they would put all their good ore and also they would run waste rock over here too. You can see those big piles of waste material. And at one time they went all the way across here and they flattened them all out. And of course now they have a vents on top of it. We're up here exploring around Virginia City and we got up over here in line with all the air shafts for the Sutro Tunnel and we saw this. Now, I'm not sure what it is, but it looks like it looks like there was a plaque here at one time. Oh, I hear the train. Now, if anybody out there knows what this thing is, leave me a comment down below because it, like I said, it looks like there was a plaque here and this might be some type of a grave site. I don't know. Are you having fun out there yet? You better. This is something most people never get to see. Oh, you got this old 1880 tractor in here. Yeah, this was donated to us. We use, no way. We use this all the time. We give it to us for free. We found these out here. Oh, look at where they would feed the mules. Yeah. This is so cool. Look at this. Oh, and they got cores. Do they got the uh, info stamped on the front? Of oh, look, they do yeah, have information. We don't have the book, so we don't know what any of it means. This is all trachyte right here. I know this stuff anywhere. I don't know why they're coring trachyte. 1904, they dumped in a quarter million. 1979, Houston Oil Minerals came out and dumped in a bunch more money. So I'm not sure. I'm wondering if this is from the 70s. Could be. Because I. I can see them coming in and they're doing exploratory drilling and they're trying to find more pockets or any leads oh. to see if, if there's any anything since they've already got the haulage drift already cut. If they could sample since it, it, having a haulage drift this long is, is beautiful for mining companies because yeah. it gives them a snapshot of what's inside the earth. Oh, okay. Wow. That's history right there. That is history. That's so cool they donated it. What? What? Uh, I got piles of these out here. Wow. You gotta take some of them. This is so cool. This is where they kept all the mules. Yeah. Here, go ahead. What's up there? Just nothing. If you want to see though, we rebuilt the roof. You see some of the new wood versus the wood that's 100 years old. Oh, yeah, on the rafters. Oh. Yeah. Huh? This ain't half bad. We have some good contractors and some amazing donors. Right. The volunteers. These guys. A lot of construction workers out here right. donate their time, yeah. You come over here, you can see a whole bunch of little ones. You got them? Swimming all over. A bunch of little guys are heading this way because they saw us. They're all scrolling up in these reeds. I don't know if they pick up in the camera. Oh yeah, I see one. one. Yeah. Those are little uh, small mouths. Dead.
Sutro's house was right where we're standing. Fireplace was right here. There's one on the other side. There's some of the old uh, gas lines, it looks like, right there. Either that or water lines. And then when it burned, this thing toppled over, and that's why you have all this fire brick right here. All right, so for you guys out there that don't know, and I'll put up photos later, they ran cables from these dead men to hold the house from sliding around. So they had three over here on the north side, and they got three more over on the west side because that's the direction the wind blows. Think about it. You know when uh, his younger brother sold the Sutro Tunnel? A month after he died in 1898. Wow. <laughs> that's when his brother Theodore had to hold on to it until Adolf died. Okay. That was part of the deal. You work it and, and until he, he dies, dies. And then then Theodore could sell uh, it. Did he die under mischievous uh, circumstances? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you read the book, yeah. Really? It was, it, it was really interesting. He died. I could see his brother. Hey, you want some of this uh, <laughs> Well, no, it was his, his daughter. His no daughter way. rushes him out of the mansion to her apartment. She's a doctor, right? So she's a doctor in 1898 in San Francisco, female doctor then. It was really rare. Yeah. She's like, I'm gonna take care of him, rushes it to her apartment. He dies shortly thereafter. So it's kind of really strange, the whole thing. And then his ashes were found in, in the 1970s. They found his ashes in an urn. They think uh. it was his ashes by the cliff house. Okay. By the bath. So they, they exhume this, they clear it up, they take it to the, uh, um, where you take dead people. Yeah, uh, cemetery. Cem not a cemetery, uh, the coroner. Oh, take it to the coroner. coroner. Someone comes the next day, says they're related to Adolf Sutro, and they took the ashes. The family comes after They say, no. They said, no. Who'd you give it to? He goes, I don't know. I didn't have the sign. I don't know. I did you <laughs> check ID? They don't know where Adolf Sutro is. Yeah. Well, maybe he's back here. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? But this is on the cliff. Oh, that is so, so cool. cool. Let's see how many people out there are smart fellers and not fart smellers, okay? Tell me what this thing is. There's another one up on the hill. Hmm, they kind of line up. That's the only clue I'm going to give you. And they had a switch up there, and this one heads mm -hmm. off this way. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, makes right sense. Here's where my wife found a dime. No way! In 1888. Oh my god. Just sitting there, like I said, things just come up. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Look at this. So, we got this one in rough cut. We got a bunch of rough cut that we ordered that we're using to restore, but we're gonna, we're gonna rough this up. So it looks good. Yeah, age it. Here. Look, did you see this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pour something there to fix it. No, this is so cool. They tell you. So that, I guess there is a hole here and they put a stone in it or they built around it I, or this just kind of weathered through. See these markings? Yeah. These are brands from the ranchers. Oh yeah. You can see the letters. Yep. There's a J, there's an arrow, a P. I don't know what that is, but yeah, these are definitely brands. Between, so they, they built a saloon in here and these are wine corks. Oh yeah. And, and, bottles, and there's all sorts of stuff. They have a saloon in here? Yeah, they have a saloon in here. And then, oh, here's a cigar case, a Cuban cigar case. Oh, yeah. They put the saloon in here in 1963. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, you can see the decking there where they had a porch where we just came in. Right there where we came in is, of course, red and white. And the inside of it. Oh, you had a couch in there. <laughs> you gotta have a couch. Cut nails when we, when we can't replace with old ones. Look at that. And there's an, there's an old one, see. So, vintage, modern, see that? That's how dedicated they are to restoring this the proper way. Went out and even got square nails. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. Look at that thing. Notice there's no hole in the middle. Yeah, this is one of the old schools. Used to put that in what was called a slugger. Give you about a year's worth of life on that thing. Where it was? This was over here running this way. Right. And the whole thing was falling down. So we pulled it off and put it back. We found some old photos. This is where the staircase originally was. So we put it back where it originally was, shored this up. We put this in here. We put this here and we're doing everything structurally sound and historically accurate as possible. Yeah. It was all right. I love your authentic washers. Yeah. That's the real deal right there. Yep. 
That's not no Kmart stuff. We do everything as historically accurate as possible. Wow. Not just like, I mean, you can go in somewhere and just buy something from the store and nail it in or glue it, but we're doing it right. No, you are doing it right. When I saw those washers, I'm like, hey, those are the ones I used in the old days. And look, so we're even cutting out oh, everything yeah. by hand and, and doing it all perfect. Yeah, you got a nice notch in there. Mm -hmm. Reflooring it. Mm -hmm. This is all rough cut too. Yeah, that's the good stuff to use. Mm -hmm. Somebody had a uh, bathtub here. They gonna take a bath in here. <sighs> you coming up with me, or are you gonna stay down here and eat chips and get fat? Huh? Oh, you got a nice law. They used to show movies up there on old real uh, French foreign movies. Uh. What kind of French boy? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Tony Tennant says that he would uh, cook venison steaks right on top of this. Really? Yeah. Some slag or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's melted. I don't know if that's. It doesn't feel like lead. Wow. They dug this trench and they piped the water from the tunnel into their swimming pool over here. And oh. at that time, they said the water was so hot, it was like a hot tub out here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they just dug this out and took old wood that they found around here and, and lined it with, I think, cement or concrete and filled it with water from the tunnel. Wow, and then so they just went swimming in here. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the bottom of it. <laughs> yeah, I know, it was flat at one time. Wow. Just having fun. Yeah, they had chicken wire and then they put cement up on it. And they had a deep end too. Just imagine this was a pool at one time. What a way to get out of the heat, huh? And this is all water from the uh, from the mine. Uh, could you drink it? Uh, I don't. I wouldn't. <laughs> they probably did. Blue, like a mineral bath. Maybe it was good for the, the skin and the complexion. What do you think, Sweetie? Anybody up for a bath? <laughs> Help! I'm drowning. Help! <laughs> That is a laundry machine. My grandma had one of these. Yep, just like this. You don't want to get your fingers in that. I'll tell you that right now. You guys got any dirty laundry out there? Huh? And me, I've been here making stuff. Drill press, oh, sure. chop saw, MIG welder, gas welder. Yes. There's a, a print press. Oh, yeah. We take this out sometimes. Look at that. Yeah. And it still has a lettering. What does it say? It's a sutro tunnel. Ah, I'm going to say, it better say sutro <laughs> tunnel. What do you think it says, Joe? Me, I, mine would say US dollar on it. <laughs> this is where you go to get your whooping if you're bad. Don't let me get you in the wood shop. Holy cow. This it's was... in perfect shape. No. no. No? One of our volunteers rebuilt it piece by piece. They dug it up. It was buried out here, covered in brush. Uh, the legs were all broken off and he rebuilt this piece by piece. There's a couple little more things we need to do this gear here wow. and here, and then it can be operational again. But all this was done one piece of He rebuilt it. Oh, there's, yeah, you can see where one's broken right yeah, here. Yeah, that one's broke, and we need another gear here. Yeah. And then we'll be able to run it. Wow. Yep, one piece at a time. Man. And then painted it. Look at that. He sandblasted everything clean and then painted it. Oh, my gosh. The legs were broken off and restored those. Yeah. Holy cow, this is, this looks really good. Let's see how many of you guys out there know what this thing is. I'm gonna tell you here in a second. So don't cheat, leave your comment down below. So I'm gonna give you five seconds to leave your comment down below. Come on, get off the couch, leave me a comment. Time's up, it's a planer. It's an old wood planer. And it's the best shape I have ever seen of a wood planer. Put the wood in here, you can trim the sides with these two guys right here. See these guys, they could trim the wood on the outer side and then the top and bottom of the wood. First you do one side at a time. This would trim one side, you'd run it through. This is the feeder that would pull it through. That's what all these little teeth are for, it'd pull the wood through. Take it out, run it on the other side to get the other side and you got yourself a nice milled piece of wood. This whole wall was falling down and we restored this wall, fixed it up right. Wow. Yeah, and this is all rough cut wood. Yeah. Yeah, this is real wood. This isn't that cheap stuff you buy at Home Depot. And yeah, we got this from uh, Tahoe Lumber, so this is was cut by them. Wow. Yeah. 
This looks really good. And you poured in a slab around the... Oh, this was here. This oh, this was? was? And they, look, they poured it right on top of the wood. <laughs> oh, yeah, they did. Yeah. <laughs> we had to jack up that side of the building because this whole thing was falling down. Wow. Yeah. So this is Greg Melton. That's him. Right. That's the statue that's in Carson. And this is him rebuilt or building the statue originally. And he had, this is the, the cat. Oh, the molding. The, the molding for the hand. Across from him is the Kit Carson statue. Right. That was made by Buckeye Blake. Buckeye also lived out here too. Wow. So there's a lot of, there's a section of time where a lot of artists were just drawn to this place. And she has two graves in both. <laughs> you yeah. died twice? Yeah. Well, they don't know which one's which. Wow. So that's all these things were. Oh, somebody left the door open. We'll close that. Come on in. But it's kind of, somebody was living here up until fairly recently. Yeah. He's gone now, but. Ooh. Yeah. Good. Ooh. He's ready. No, I just, it's got an interesting smell to it. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. 1970s styling. Oh, yeah. 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 It's a man, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Groovy baby. Uh, that seems seen better days. Yeah. Well, so this is this needs work. Is this laundry room? What yeah. Is this? Oh, it's a work little work bench here. Yeah. Got that place. Come out here to work on water heater. Got that mm -hmm. water here. Yeah. Yeah. This is the old workshop. Oh, there's a moth. You're gonna be stuck in here. Go out the front door. Yeah. Oh, there's plenty of broken windows. Yeah. He has ways to get in and out. A uh, huge mousetrap. Right, this is, uh, we got it. This is, we got to get this thing, clean it out. We just uh, got to take a bath real quick. Hold on. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, wow. There's two doors into that bathroom. Never seen that before. Holy cow. Yeah, this is old school right here. Yeah. Wow. Ready to pull up. Some of the boards and look, they're square nails beneath a lot of the stuff. Oh, I'm sure. So this place is a lot older than this 1970s stuff. I'm assuming that that's the bedroom right there. Because that way you can just make a hot hook to the, the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Living room, front porch, have your coffee in the morning. For you guys out there who have not a clue as to what this is, before they came out with pumps, this is how they draw water out of the mines. There's a little stopper right here. So it plugs the bottom. You can see how they had rubber down here around the edges to seal it. They'd pull this thing up, dump the water out, push it back down. As it went down, the water would force this little guy up. It would fill up with water. When they start to pull it up, bloop, the little plug would go back down. It's real simple. Just drop it in, fill it up, up and down, up and down all day long. Beep, beep. The way it's chosen the drill, the map of the site makes me think this was the doctor's office. Right. Based on where it's mapped on that journal. He did let me have a photo of it. If any of you guys out there are good at rebuilding these old hit and miss engines, why don't you give this guy a call? I'm leaving all the link down below so you can help him rebuild this stuff and get it running again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you even got a little night light out here too. I like the bench, how they put it in there. Brick on top of the wood floor. What? Whoa. Okay, I've never seen that done. Yeah, yeah. Brick on the wood. What was it? This looks like a bathroom. That's where the bathtub was. That's outside now. Uh, in, the, in the living room? Yeah, well, there's a wall here. Oh, that's why there's no brick in the middle. Yeah, because that's where the wall was. So there was, the, the wall came here and here. Yeah. So there was a something there was a, there was here. A, there was a cabinet there with a sink. Oh, so you come in from here. Yeah. Toilet. Just, yep. Well, sink. the bathtub was here. I don't okay. know how the toilet must have been there too, I guess. Yeah. That looks like a yeah, toilet fitting. Really, yeah. And that looks like a sink fitting. There's your water. Hot and cold. So this was all done by Hans in the 60s in this old carriage house. Wow. Yeah. That's I've never seen <laughs> I can see walk in. Hey man, I'm taking a bath. Join me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they build this up into this room. But this is you can see the trough right there. Go ahead. Oh yeah, oh look at that thing. Yeah. Look so this is neat. Come over here and look up here. A loft? The loft, we see the sign? That's the old Sutro Tunnel wood sign that they cut up and used for the Oh yeah. Wow, look at that. Oh, I love that window. Yeah. I'm assuming that's where his bed was? I don't know. I'm trying to do an interview with him sometime. Wow. Is he still alive? Yeah, Hans is still alive, yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, this is where they would come to feed. Mm -hmm. That's a no-brainer. Although I don't know how they'd get them in here. Well, there's a door. Great big door over here. You can kind of tell from the outside, and they just walled up over the top of it. Oh, because I'm like, they didn't come in through that door. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, this is so cool. Now, if I had to guess, this is where they would keep the hay for the animals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they could just shovel it down from there into here. Yeah. So it was like a little barn, but yeah. Barn, yeah. And then they... and he turned it into his house. Yep. I love these old stoves. This is this is a really good looking one too. That's nice. I love that window. That just really adds to it. That really does. Yeah, this would have to be open right here. Wow, imagine the stories and the history. All this wood could talk. Yeah, here's how you get up there. Here, like a regular lock. Oh yeah, Sutro Tunnel. Yeah, that is so cool. The old advertisement or the old sign. Mm -hmm. Sutro Tunnel Stables. Yeah. Wow. That is cool. This was the Shoals house in Carson City. Moved here in the 70s. The Shoals are one of the oldest families in Carson. But we do need to do siding and paint and windows. Yeah, but it's in good shape. Yeah, it's it's got good bones. To it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's in good shape. Oh, no way. This is so cool! Ooh, is it making you dizzy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what's ooh? Ooh, what's that? Somebody left chocolate chips for me. Mmm, chocolate chip cookies. That's not part of a stairwell, that's just part of the roof. Yeah, but there might be a storage up in there. You wanna take a bath? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Look at that. Look at that view. Look at that. Yeah, there's a sutro tunnel way over there. But well, this is a, kind of a favorite of all the ghost hunters too. Yeah, right, right here. Once we're all cleaned up and done. Yeah. Photos. Get some new glass in. Yeah. Well, that's that's the, the old was really nice before. Yeah, you can see how they kind of upgraded things over time. Over and time. Then, then it just sat. And they stop caring about it. Wow. Little island in the middle. Oh, look at these old doorknobs. I love these things. With the old lock with the skeleton key. Who's in there? Get out of there. So what I want you to do is I've got links down below to his site. Now, if you guys know how to rebuild any of this stuff or you just want to volunteer your time, there's a link down below. I want you to call this man, okay? Why don't you make a donation while you're there too? A couple bucks isn't gonna kill you, come on. They still need money to fix this portal. Once they get this thing fixed and Inshaw approved, then they're gonna have people coming in here. And you can come out here on a tour anytime you want. Thank you for coming out, Jeff. I really appreciate you, Ooh, man. I am so excited for you to come out. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. So what else can they do? 
Yeah, so if you go to our website, you can click on donate to help to, uh, fund the project, help us get this tunnel done and the site around us. Because when we get this done, you can travel through it. You can go into the tunnel itself and travel back and see the Comstock load in person when we get this completed. So you can help us out through donating through financials or volunteer your time. If you want, just contact us through the website and I'll be in touch. This is the only way into the Comstock load and they're working on opening it. You're gonna see stuff nobody's ever seen since they had the Comstock running. Uh, we're gonna do our best and I want you to do your best, okay? And if you like this video, you're gonna see more of it if, that's right, if you guys come out and help. Before we get on out of here, I wanna give a big shout out to Andrea, which is his daughter. How you doing, Andrea? Hey, sweetie. So I hope to see you out here next time. I really love what your dad is doing. I'm very proud of him because this is a piece of history that if it wasn't for him, would fade away just like all the other mining camps and pieces of historic value. So a big, big shout out for this man right here. So he's a good man. Thanks, Jeff. So until next time, this is Jeff Williams and Chris Patterson saying you love the Comstock load and the Sutro Tunnel. Well, we do too. You come out and serve up time and some donations and maybe you can get in there for some AU too. You know what I'm going to say, huh? I do. So, so come, come on. on. Let's, Let's go. go.